her live. Hi, LaToya. Uh, thank you so much for meeting with me today to be highlighted as Women in STEM for Women's History Month coming up. I guess the first question I have for you is, can you just share with our audience a little bit about your uh, self and what you do at Amazon? Sure, uh, my name, oh, I already said my name. Um, so I'm a senior software development manager within the Amazon business ads team. And essentially what that means is we have a team that builds ad experiences for the Amazon business site. I also manage a team that um, does ad placements uh, for the, what we say, the consumer site that uh, build experiences there as well. Um, different placements that uh, help advertisers reach um, their target audience. And I've been with Amazon for, it'll be actually 10, 10 uh, years this month, <laughs> really long time, almost yellow, uh, red badging. And um, prior to Amazon, I previously was an engineer, uh, worked as a TPM, um, so I've had various different types of roles before landing on a, a software development manager role. Awesome. 10 years is a huge accomplishment accomplishment to stay at Amazon. That is pretty it impressive, is. <laughs> as you probably know. Um, <laughs> what inspired you to pursue a career in this field? Like, how did your journey lead you to where you are today? So in terms of engineering, I've, I've always, I guess, tinkered with um, things with my hands at home when I was a kid. I, I originally wanted to um, be a pediatrician or something along those lines. And then um, when I, as a freshman, and I, I went to Boston University and I started off as pre-med. And as a freshman, I had a coding course for, I think it was in C or, or C++. Uh, and I loved it. I, I loved the ability to create and um, tinker, in this case, with software and be able to produce a result and just ideate and create. And um, through the degree that I had, it, it was a mix of both software and hardware engineering. So I got to build like microelectronics um, and then add software to it. But, but yeah, that really did fuel me just because I, I just liked building things. And I, I guess what also helped is both my parents were in lines of work that um, where they're building. So my, my mom was a carpenter for about 25 years and my father uh, was a machinist. He worked in transportation on like buses for almost the equivalent, like 20, 25 years. And yeah, they would just have like tools around the house. I would see them build things. And yeah, I just, I just love doing that as well. I love that. So it was like, you were already exposed to it in your life yeah, and that kind of led you to where yeah. you are today. Exactly. I, I guess I wasn't afraid to try and uh, build something and have it not work. I, th I think that's a key thing with engineering where you just have to dive in and try things out and you'll probably fail most of the time until when you get it working, it's like the best, <laughs> the best feeling ever. Um, and yeah, that, that's how I feel like uh, my career and even schooling and engineering has been just working through problems um, until you get it right. Absolutely. So can you share with us a significant milestone or achievement that you've had in your career that you're particularly proud of? Um, I know one, but I wonder if you're thinking the same one, and I'm sure you have other ones throughout your career. Oh, that's funny that you have one. Maybe actually, so a big one, which I guess was a misconception when I was starting as a junior engineer, but uh, prior to Amazon, I worked at IBM and they had a big program for like coming up with ideas and getting them patented or at least submitting them for, for to get the patented. So I have four patents through that. Um, and I thought like to get something patented, you had to be like the scientist and have like a PhD. So yeah, it's pretty cool that um, for th that I was able to patent some ideas that are, you know, things that are around like social um, dynamic or um, another one is for just being able to find information on like a, a page that has um, comments or recommendations, which, which we see happens all the time today. So yeah, so I think that was pretty cool. I don't know if that's the same one you were thinking of, but. <laughs> yes, I forgot about that. But you also have one more. This past year, you did get leveled 
Talk a oh, little bit about right. the I amount did. of work that you had to put in, as we all know, as fellow Amazonians, is not easy to get leveled. That and so tell us a little right. bit about that experience and what that was like for you and, and what you did to get leveled and a little bit about it. Yes. So I, I think that's huge. I mean, obviously getting promoted in a level isn't just a one point in time, you know, they, it's about a culmination of things done up until that point. So I think for me, the biggest change of what I needed to do to get to that next level is think about like strategic vision. And I, I gotten that feedback from um, my manager, from my, I have a work coach that talked about that, like in terms of getting to the next level. So, but it's, it's not always when someone says like, oh, you need to be more strategic and visionary. It's like, okay, well then how do I do that? <laughs> and there's, there's no like guidebook to it. Um, I think on the tactical side, which is uh, tactical in the sense of, you know, you're able to, um, from from a, I guess, software development sense, you're able to uh, drive a particular problem, get it um, uh, assigned throughout your team of engineers, and then um, be able to help them work through it to launch it and execute on it. So I was able to do that. And that's just the base of being a software development manager. And then also understanding like the architecture that you're working in and being able to make suggestions of like how to improve that architecture. Are we uh, creating things in the right technology? Are we creating things so that it's uh, we're leaving things better than how we found them? Um, and then within ads, there's uh, a lot of like legacy systems. So like when do we choose to like build something new versus like plugging into a legacy system? So all of that. I had been doing um, beforehand for a few years, and I, I did it both within ads, and I, I was um, a software dev manager of like three different teams. The other part is just building up the team, like being able to support the engineers, helping them grow, making sure that they have the right opportunities to code well and get feedback. Um, being able to design, like if they're a L5 plus engineer, being able to design um, what it is that they're trying to build effectively, collaborate with others. So all of that as well, um, I did. But then for L7 specifically, it's it's very big on being strategic, um, influencing across the board uh, with other teams. So I did, uh, my manager is really great in helping me kind of map, in, in my work coach, and helping me just map out like, what areas do we plug into today that I could do that with? And then the the last piece was, um, I believe my director and my manager at the time were just saying like, you know, you should create a, what they call like a three-year plan strategic doc in terms of the tech ar uh, architecture. So I did that and um, really worked in step with like looking at like our OP1 plan and then looking at what the things that we've previously built, the challenges that we've had, and then having a three-year outlook of, you know, if we're trying to build um, these additional things uh, in terms of, um, to meet our customer base, what type of technology and architecture do we need to make sure to have um, and, and kind of working backwards from that. So doing those things really, I think, helped kind of, I guess, seal the deal. Um, for getting to L7 on top of the other foundational things that I mentioned. Awesome. And you mentioned that you had a work coach. Was that your manager that helped you or did you have a specific mentor that their only focus was helping you level? And I, had a mentor, I had a mentor who, who um, recommended a work coach. So I, I do have several mentors, so I should call that out. I've always had mentors throughout any thing in my life um, and I would not be here today without like the support of like mentors, um, the support of many great managers. And in this case, like with the work coach, I think the reason why it was really good to have a work coach was the work coach kind of helped me navigate things that you don't see on paper, that you don't see on, you know, role guidelines that, you know, uh, you might have to navigate particular like relationships or attitudes or, uh -huh. you know, I'm, I'm a black female in tech. So, you know, sometimes it could be situations where that's, you know, an issue where you're dealing with like microaggressions, or I guess nowadays we call it aggressions um, and knowing how to handle that effectively. So just, and then just being the only one, like it, it is, it is definitely nice to be able to see others that look like you, 
on a day to day mm -hmm. basis. I don't usually see that. Um, but I, I was a big proponent of building a diverse team and working with diver a diverse set of folks, which which definitely helped. So, um, you know, sometimes you just second guess yourself when you're in a situation where you're the only one or you might have yes. different ideas coming forth because of your history and your background. So having a work coach like help me navigate through that in different situations that I was encountering really made me feel more confident and more, um, what's the word, like just more sure of the decisions that I was making, where before I might like second guess or might not proceed uh, because, you know, uh, maybe I'm thinking that um, it's wrong when, you know, technically it's right. I just need to make sure to um, uh, uh, pr propose it and share it more way. Yeah, in a different way. That's awesome. And so is this, this work coach, is this an, an Amazonian? No, they are not an Amazonian. They're outside. It's usually someone outside of the company. Okay. Yeah. But I think it, you, I'm okay. sorry. Um, I was just asking if it was Amazonian that you is helping you navigate the culture of Amazon, but this is somebody who's helping you with your overall career, not just Amazon as part of your career, correct? Correct. And the great thing about this work coach is they have coached several others within Amazon. So they were very, very much familiar and they, they've been doing it for like, I don't know, like 20 plus years. So they were very familiar with Amazon um, work culture, different levels and things like that. So they did definitely help me navigate um, in, in Amazon terms, so to speak, how to, how to, um, in, in terms of like my background, my previous experience, where I want to go overall in my career, how to do that within Amazon. That's awesome. That's so great. And I haven't heard anyone talk about this. So I, that's why I wanted it for you to kind of share a little bit more, because I think it would be helpful for our viewers as well that Definitely. will be watching this. So you mentioned a little bit in uh, in some of your comments, um, being a woman making significant contributions in your field, like what challenges have you faced along the way and how have you overcome them? You alluded to the fact that obviously being the only black female in a predominantly um world where there isn't as many, I'm sure there were some challenges you had to overcome. Can you share any of those challenges Ooh, you faced? There's a long laundry list. Actually, <laughs> I probably didn't even recognize I was having until afterwards. I'm like, oh, wow. But I mean, the full gamut of like, you know, when I was a junior engineer, this was before Amazon, you know, typical things that people talk about, like, you know, if your hair is a different way, like folks like not even complimenting you, but just saying like, oh, your hair is different today. Or um, uh, when I would like, you know, there were a few other engineers, uh, junior engineers when I was starting off that were people of color. And um, I think, yeah, specifically black in the sense. And, you know, we would like get together for lunch, right? Because none of us are work day to day with each other. But it's, again, it's nice to get with folks that are similar to you culturally. So I remember there was a comment from someone that came to the table and said like, oh, is this the black table? And so just a lot of different um, aggressions when I was younger that came about from that. I remember um, maybe like mid-career, I uh, was attending a conference for work in Germany. And there were, I always would feel like some type of, I don't know if it's aggression or just like I don't know, just like side side eye from a particular person uh, that I was on the team with. And um, they we were all supposed to meet up to go to lunch, right? We're in a foreign country, Germany. This is my first time in Germany. And they pretty much stood me up. Um, so that happened. And then as I got older, there was less aggressions of that type, but more of, um, you know, as a woman, like, you know, making sure that your your voice is heard. So it's like, um, you know, how do I, uh, if, if there's like a lot of male speaking and there's like um, a more direct tone, um, I naturally do have a bit of a direct tone. <laughs> my, my family's like Caribbean Latin, so that's just comes with the territory. But like, you know, making it so that I didn't feel like I was like having an attitude with folks or, being aggressive in a way that folks felt like they couldn't work with me. So that's happened in the past. Um, and then I guess more recently, like, you know, or not, not even recently, but just in general, like, you know, folks saying like, oh, you're articulate or, 
or, um, you know, for, for the role that you have. And then they second guess like what role I have. And then when I tell them what role I have, they're surprised um, or working on projects and, you know, I'm being talked to as if like, I'm not, or uh, the conversation is going on as if I'm not there. And I've already mentioned that I'm the lead for a particular area. Um, and then they step back and then they say like, oh, sorry, I didn't know that. So just, I, mean, I again, I could go on and on <laughs> um, of all the different things that have happened. And I don't take like any, I think a big thing that my parents have always taught me is like, you know, there's going to be people that come at you all different types of ways. And the biggest thing that you could do is just keep going forward with what you need to do and, you know, get your education, get, you know, get what you need to get done and forget about those other people. Obviously defend yourself, but, you know, for, forget about like that. They're not, they're not the ones that are going to pay your paycheck at the end of the day. Um, it's a great perspective you know, on right. how to and handle then, those exactly. things that you kind of expect them to happen. So don't be surprised, but just keep moving on and try to shrug it off. Um, I mean, it's not okay also to just keep moving absolutely. on. So I, I do yeah. like that the newer generations that are younger than me are like facing it head on. So I, I think um, I feel like more being like that. And I, I, I definitely um, like to mentor other folks of color, obviously, as they work through challenges like this. And I've, I've heard the full gamut of them and they've been horrible. So, you know, if, if I can just share some of the things that I went through and help them navigate it to know that, you know, to let them know that they're not by themselves or mm -hmm. it's not wrong with them that, you know, they can get through it, it does help. Absolutely. Um, that's really great feedback and advice for our viewers. How do you think your unique perspective as a woman has influenced the work that you've done and contributed to your success? Um, I do notice that, I mean, I, I guess I have a, like a lot of folks who say that I'm generally like happy and and just jovial, I guess. But I think I do notice that like when I come into meetings with a lot of guys, like it's very like get down to the work and um, not as friendly. I, and I don't want to generalize because this does not happen across the board. But when I'm on a call with like, let's say it's all women, which it's rare, but it happens a lot within my team because we have a lot of women on our team. It's definitely more like just, like you don't have like this like uh, wall up, I guess, so to speak. I, I don't know the best way to say it, but it's a lot more friendlier, you know, a little bit of chatter in the beginning. So I, I do notice that when, um, and this is like women across the board, whether they're tech or non-tech, different roles and same for men. So I do feel like when a woman comes in, they bring an aspect of um, just, uh, I'm trying to think of like the best word for it, but just like kind of meeting people where they are and hearing like there's more listening happening. There's more um, less of an aggressive nature happening. Um, there's always exceptions to the rule, but I, I do find I've been around in this space for 20 something years that like the walls are kind of like taken down a bit when women are involved when they're not involved, I feel like there's a bit more walls up and, you know, it might take some time to get down and it's fine. Um, but yeah, but th that's the biggest difference I've seen. And then just the perspective of being more inclusive. Um, there's a lot of data that shows that not even just women, but if you have someone who's, who has a, has a different background from other folks, then they end up bringing better, different perspectives, um, they end up hiring people that look um, more diverse or come from diverse backgrounds. So it's just great to have a different thought process or different um, folks coming in that have different perspectives so that when you're, let's say, building something for a customer, you're not just doing it um, based upon like one thing. You're, you're really thinking about like the whole sets of customers that you're, you're going to be building for. And, you know, how do you make sure that you're, you know, including all of them or at least the majority of them. Um, but th yeah, there's been just different examples of um, like, uh, like I, I had a, a, a you know, a, two kids while working at Amazon and the time frame of uh, how, let's say, 
the what they call quote unquote the mother's room looks and the in the resources that are available has grown immensely like when i had my first child um i was like kind of like in a storage closet <laughs> and um i think that if there wasn't a woman to come in and say hey like we should make these accommodations better for women um you know men don't know that experience right they don't have to go through this so fast forward when i had my second kid there was like a whole wing and refrigerators and you know plug ups for your laptop if you did need to work or take a quick call during that time um so yeah so just you know that's a very simple example but huge when it comes to the work environment for a woman who's had kids so so yeah so i think women just bring that perspective of of trying to be more inclusive when it comes to whenever whatever work that you're trying to do in delivering for a customer. Awesome. And so what advice would you give to other women who aspire to excel in your field or make a difference in their respective uh, industries? I would definitely say, uh, first and foremost, be yourself. Um, I think a lot of the times, uh, especially when you're when you're the only one, you end up picking up the habits of folks around you, whether it's, you know, um, being more direct or aggressive or um, uh, just w whatever the habits are that are outside of like what you would normally do, especially in the, in the tech space. And the second thing is, you know, this goes without saying is in general, just, you know, uh, grow and being strong technically. And um, I, I remember a mistake that I did when I was younger doing engineering school was that I was doing a lot of stuff by myself and I wasn't like working with groups of other students who um, could help me. And I think that's a huge thing that women need is like they need that group support. Everyone, especially when it comes to engineering, you need that group support. So make sure to seek out um, a group support or folks whether they look like you or don't look like you so that you can grow technically that so that you can get the feedback that you need to focus on the areas that you need to grow in and then pay it forward like make sure to um, mentor others share your experience with others um, it, it doesn't happen uh, with you know just a few folks alone it happens with all of us so the more women that can share their experience and help others grow the more women will have uh, hopefully in the tech space Toya? Yep, yeah, I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> I don't I sounded like you got cut off. Oh no, no. Uh, it probably was a noise on my computer. I don't even know what notification it was. Oh, it's okay. Um, in your opinion, what are some key opportunities or areas for growth for women in your field? How can we continue to foster inclusivity and diversity in this field? Well, that's a big one. <laughs> um, one that I was talking with like another female L7 SDM, which is a loaded statement because there's not a lot of us, or I guess we've started to have more, but there's still a small amount, is just back to basics of like having that support. Um, and it's not even just for women, but it, it is more prevalent for women because, you know, they're, they're a smaller underrepresented group within tech. But the space of like um, being able to... Uh, make sure that like a female engineer has someone that they can reach out to, um, has someone that they can feel comfortable like talking through um, different like challenges that they're having with like a technical space that they're in. Because when, when, when you have folks in an underrepresented group that are trying to attack a problem, but they don't feel comfortable enough to talk about it with others, like mm -hmm. that, that just leads to a whole bunch of other problems where it's like, oh, well, they're not performing well, or, yes, you know, I tried to give them advice, but they're not taking it. And yeah. it's, well, a lot of the times folks, w even from a cultural standpoint, feel that they need to accomplish things on their own before they go to others, because again, they're underrepresented. So mm -hmm. I think we definitely need to do a better job of like, we have a lot of folks ad hoc, you know, that mentor and things like that, but we need to do like a better, like wide scale program that's supported within Amazon that um, talks about these areas, because I've, I've seen it time and time again, again come up uh, so many times with mentoring. 
And the level of confidence that um, increases for particular mentees when we talk about that and navigating, like, how do they seek out help? How do they navigate through challenges and problems is huge. Like, they, it's almost like overnight, they just do so much better. So I feel like if we were to roll out something better Amazon-wide that's pointed just for women um, and not not to because a lot of times we have programs through like affinity groups but people feel like oh i have work to do like you know i don't have time to do xyz like it should be something that's mandatory that um yeah. is supported within our management chain that um what women can go to um to get that like we we definitely get things like that when you go to like a grace hopper conference um so and then like you know there's the all conference uh that that also promotes a lot of um uh, uh, programs and, and sessions, but I think making it mandatory and supportive and promoted across Amazon would, would um, help immensely. Awesome. Thank you, Latoya. And then now switching gears and talking about you, can you tell us about a project or initiative that you're currently involved in that you might be passionate about and how it's making a positive impact? If there's um, any. So in the past, I was involved with, um, it was called Brave Space Groups that I had co-created with uh, someone else in Amazon. They, they, they're no longer here. But essentially, we it was along the same lines of what I was just mentioning, where we wanted to get groups of women together with others, kind of like group mentoring. And then there would be like an advisor for that group that was, um, I think, L7 or L6+. Plus. And we were able to roll it out during COVID, and it worked out really well and we got received great feedback. Um, it did die off a bit, like, you know, um, a lot of, you know, ec economic downturn happened across tech space, Amazon, a lot of additional work given to folks. So, you know, we just didn't have time to continue running a program like that. Um, but it is something that I think uh, when I was previously speaking with the same L7 female SDM that we, that we need again. Um, so that's something that I'll always be passionate about is making sure that folks can connect to each other, share with each other. Um, so it could be something that we'll redo again, but um, you know, maybe on a smaller scale since we don't have like a dedicated um, quote unquote like DEI or diversity program manager to, to help run it. Um, but we could do smaller scale where folks can still connect and feel like they're um, getting advice from senior women leaders. That's awesome. I look forward to hearing more about that. Um, cool. How are you balancing all this? How are you balancing your professional achievements with your personal life and well-being? Like, how do you keep a balance between all um, these things that you're involved in? I definitely, I definitely have scaled back the things that I'm involved in just because now, like as an L7 SDM, my, the scope is a lot bigger, but um, I do continue to mentor and I just, you know, keep uh, well of my calendar, like maybe uh, I'll do like monthly sessions with different folks. Um, I also have a great partner, my husband, who's amazing that, um, you know, we, we share the load together in terms of um, like household and work. And that's worked out really, really well. And then I also just make sure to give time for myself. Like I, I, I try to, you know, when I, on the weekends, I usually don't work, maybe 10% of the time I might have worked. I, I did do some work last night because there was an escalation that came up, um, which derailed me from doing other things. But for the most part, I really try not to work on the weekends um, and or after work during the week because I want to spend time with my family and, and my daughters who are six and eight. So yeah, just um, being able to make sure to say no to the things I just cannot do. And then focusing, uh, and uh, Colleen Aubrey always says this, like ruthlessly prioritizing, like focusing on the utmost top things that need my attention that, you know, I can't delegate to someone else. And then everything else um, that can be delegated, I delegate, especially to help other folks grow. Um, so I, th I think that's how it's worked. Is it a perfect science? No, but <laughs> so far I'm, I'm not driving myself insane and it, it's been working out. That's awesome. I love that. And that you're giving someone an opportunity. You know, sometimes people want to close everything, you know, keep everything so close to them to right. say like it's more about 
saying that, well, I created this, I did this, and now you're opening up those opportunities to develop way more uh, women so we could see more women that look like you in the same field. So I think that's amazing as well mm -hmm. to give them those opportunities to be developed because a lot of females don't get those opportunities, you know, from their current mm -hmm. managers. And so sometimes we have to go outside of our specific team to get, get those big project opportunities where we can gain new knowledge and skills. Exactly. Like so I love hearing that. Yeah, uh, what are some lessons or insights you've gained throughout your career that you believe are important for others to know or understand? Like any key learning lessons throughout your career that you would give advice to others out there? I think some of the things that I mentioned, so like definitely being yourself, um, that authenticity is key. I definitely as a junior engineer or just starting out in my career, it was hard for me to like understand like how to be myself and, you know, work with others and feel accepted. Um, so that that's number one. Uh, number two, I mentioned like in terms of technical growth, like being able to uh, make sure to get mentors, uh, both in the uh, like mentors that are peers of yours that maybe have like a year or two ahead of you, as well as mentors who are at that next level that you wanna get to. Um, and then also um, uh, working in groups with others, seeking help from others, um, seeking help, you know, also from um, uh, like being up to date on uh, different uh, technological advances, like, for example, like Gen AI is like the big thing. So like immerse, immerse yourself a little bit on what Gen AI is um, uh, or generative arti artificial intelligence, immerse yourself on what that is and, you know, tinker around with like, um, different tools. Um, and speaking of tinker around, the last point would be never stop like trying to problem solve or playing around with like different technologies. Um, I, I um, had always done that on the side. Uh, I, I did it more before I had kids, but I don't have as much time now. But, um, but yeah, that's always fun because it really keeps you fresh and not stale or getting too comfortable in your space and helps you to think about what's next. Um, for me, like um, things around like sustainability, not just from a climate change perspective, but I just started learning about sustainability from just like different angles. Um, so I, I definitely want to learn more about that from a technological and digital space. Um, but yeah, whatever, you know, uh, interests you the most, like, you know, try and peek around to what's coming up next to understand like if it's something that you might want to go towards later on. Awesome. And just to like recap the big things you said, because you said it multiple times throughout this conversation mm -hmm. is one, make sure you're true to yourself and you know who you are. Obviously right. that comes hand in hand together that you're, um, if you're taking a learn and be curious mentality and exploring and learning about an area of interest that you might have, um, that's really helpful as well. Mm -hmm. Now, looking ahead, what are some some of your goals and aspirations for the future? I mean, now you're in L7. So, like, what do you think, both professionally and personally, if there's anything you can share of, like, what goals you have next that you want to achieve in the future? Yeah. So, I, I definitely love the objectives that we've set out within the team. So, being able to see that through, I mentioned um, that, you know, we previously developed a three-year plan which we're in the middle of executing on. So I'm, I'm super excited to um, just, you know, build those different technologies and, and um, features and products for our end customers over the next few years. Um, and then also like being able to see folks within my team grow. So uh, do, we have lots of uh, uh, proposed or potential promotions over the next few years as well. So I, I think that like, to look at like where um, we started within this immediate team to where we are now, it's pretty amazing to see how much growth has happened and how much we've been able to accomplish. So I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, seeing more folks like get higher up into leadership roles and just, you know, be badasses. <laughs> and then for myself, um, I do, and this is more like maybe 10 years down the line, but I do see myself like doing uh, work that's like more meaningful. I think that's just a natural progression as you get older, where, um, you know, I, I've been in the tech space for a long time and in different areas like retail, um, like in uh, internal workforce solutions, ads, um, things like that. So I do see myself like maybe transitioning to work that's a bit more meaningful. I mentioned like sustainability is an interest that I 
starting to look into. So yeah, maybe that's something that I'll uh, do more of more directly. I love that, Latoya. I think it's important to see people like you that, you know, you're an L7, you're probably a handful of black females who are L7s <laughs> and being able to create that path, you're paving the path for ones behind you and kind of bringing them with you is massive. And if we could have just, you know, a gazillion more women, <laughs> Amazon doing that, then we will become like the majority in the L7, L8 level. And so mm -hmm. I really, I really love that. And I look forward to seeing the additional impact you'll have uh, with women in STEM. So I appreciate you taking the time today to connect with me and share your words of wisdom and inspiration with our audience. Um, and I hope that, you know, all the goals that you're trying to achieve, they come true as well. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I should also mention too, that I really get excited learning from those that are coming up and younger than me. I, I think that's hugely important as well. So everything that you mentioned in terms of me helping others, I also look forward to being helped as well, learning, learning from um, folks younger than me. I love that. Well, thanks so much for your time, LaToya. And I Thank hope you, you enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye.